out here in the city of Fontana at the Fire District Museum, right here, woohoo, off of Arrow, right in downtown, next to Sierra, and I'm here with Captain Sean Millerick. How you uh, doing? Yeah, great, I'm doing great, thanks. Hey, well, <laughs> Captain Millerick, tell us a little bit about the museum here. Well, the museum, actually, where we're standing was up until a few years ago, an active fire station, and it was built in 1928. This is the only surviving portion of the original fire station. We tried to uh, use the original footprint of the original building yeah. to do this over here, but this is the only actual surviving piece of the original building. So this was an active fire station as of recently, basically. Yes, up uh, a few years ago. So what made it unique was since it was built so long ago, this was the original piece that was working out of this station. When we started bringing in these new, bigger and bigger <laughs> fire engines, it started getting really, really cramped in here. Sure. So. So, Captain Miller, how did this whole you know, museum come about? Okay, so when the city of Fontana decided that this building had served its purpose for all these years and uh, decided to build a new station, there's a big effort by many people to preserve what we had here, which is where we're standing. Mm -hmm. So they formed a, uh, the Fontana Fire District Preservation Society, and they worked along with the city of Fontana and the county of San Bernardino to preserve this building. And the city really stepped up in regards to preserving it and, and creating a future for the museum. Was there one individual that kind of, you know, yeah, so we had <laughs> we had a uh, retired captain who had spent a majority of his career working here and was um, like an antique dealer and really was into the history of the fire service in general and the city of Fontana's uh, history and he felt uh, like a personal mission to make sure the building was saved and then the museum was created here. Tell me a little bit about what are some of the pieces here besides this engine behind us, which we'll get to in a moment, but what are some of the pieces that you want people to come out and see? Well, so the history of the fire service in California is, uh, doesn't go as far back as say the East Coast, but there's been a lot of transformations throughout the years. So since we started here in 1928 uh, with basically a volunteer force, which just had like helmets and jackets <laughs> and really not a lot of equipment, uh, it's, we have an array of stuff here where you can kind of see the progression of the fire service in general and then the fire service in Fontana. So what is this right here? So this right here is uh, like what you would call a chemical cart or a chemical wagon and it basically had like a sodium bicarbonate and water. So it would, if you tip it, it would react and it would allow pressurized water to come through this nozzle. So there were two of these on site prior to the fire engine coming into the city. So this was the fire station. This was the fire suppression for the city prior to engine one coming here. Oh so my goodness. these are just hand carts you would move by hand if there was a, an issue. This is our baby. This was our first engine ever delivered to the city of Fontana. So um, we're happy that we kept it in our possession throughout the years. We kept it in service going on 911 calls for 46 years. So it has a, wow. a real rich history of just serving this community. It didn't run front line all that time, but yeah. it would run in reserve status in the 60s and 70s. So there were people that recently retired that remember running 911 calls on this, which to me seems crazy. Wow. So somebody took really good care of so yeah, this was like a big restoration uh, project for the fire service, uh, the firefighters here, and then also the community in general. So there's a lot of people from Fontana that helped. This was pre, you know, any kind of electronics. So oh, wow. um, most everything is like what you would call like electromechanical or mechanical. Yeah. This was what we would call, this is like the siren, but it's really a growler. We would get electrical power off the generator and this would spin this and it, that would be the wow now okay. noise. So, and that was typical in its time. There's a, a whole lot more detail in this that sure, I'm sure we can sure. go into, but it's a museum <laughs> and eventually, you'll hopefully you'll come out and And, 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 and check see it, it up close. And see it up close, absolutely. All right, we're standing in front of something very unique in the IE, let alone here in Fontana. Dennis, what are we in front of here? You're standing in front of our World Trade Center Mobile Memorial. This was put together by the firefighters of San Bernardino County. 
does not actually belong to the county. The firefighters did this on their own, along with the uh, local union. They help provide funds. What we have here is a five and a half ton piece of structural steel from Tower Two of the World Trade Center. How did how did you guys come into getting this out here to Fontana? Interesting story. Uh, the New York Port Authority had charge of all the uh, remains of the towers. Uh, any bona fide fire group could apply to get a piece for a memorial. You had to go through uh, red tape, of course. Once you do that, which takes quite a while, they don't charge you for it. Of course, then you have to arrange for a trucking company to bring the piece out. And this was a large piece. Yeah. We uh, contracted with YRC Trucking out of San Bernardino, California, to bring it out. Uh, once it arrived, I received a call from the trucking company asking me to come and inspect the load at their yard in San Bernardino. I did go out there. Uh, it was still, of course, in one of their trucks. I looked at it. They presented me with the bill. It was a little over $2,000. I gave them a check on the spot. Yeah. I said I would be back the next day with several fire engines and police cars to escort the steel to one of our stations here in Fontana. I came back the next day with a couple of fire engines, a couple of police cars. The yard manager came out and handed me the check back. Oh, he basically said, you know, for something like this, we cannot in good conscience charge you. So YRC Trucking really did us a big favor there. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. How often does the community get to see this? I mean, when do you take it out and show them? As often as it is requested or if we feel it uh, necessary to go to a certain location for a certain event. Uh, and that's why it's mobile. We could have built a stationary memorial, then only the people that came by would see it. This way we can take it to schools, civic events, we take it out to the uh, uh, raceway, the Auto Club Raceway in Fontana yeah. for events. Uh, we take it to car shows, truck shows, anything wow. we can think of by request. And believe me, it is requested all the time. Sure. it's. Amazing that you actually have a piece of history here, our history here in Fontana, where people come out and remember that day. And, and it's awesome that you guys have it here. It is so important. It is so important to remember, just like people remember Pearl Harbor. Yeah. We feel that this is an extremely important event for all of the citizens of, of our area to be able to, to see and remember. Uh, it was quite a sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, all of the material that you see also was, was donated labor, basically. The uh, individual that did the sign wouldn't charge us the, the carpeting, they wouldn't charge us the lighting, they, nobody, everybody worked on it. Oh, that's amazing. Well, Dennis, I want to thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. That's okay. Thank you for coming out. You bet. Well, obviously, something else very unique out here at the fire station, the Fire District Museum here in Fontana. Piece of history right behind us here. This is great. Thank you. Thank you.